Well, welcome to February 2021. It is Black History Month, and I've put together a little slideshow to give you some resources that I received from Isaiah Johnson. I also have some information here to kind of uh, move the month along. Um, and this does not supplant anything that's coming from Black Student Union, social studies teachers, um, any other efforts we have coming through activities. It's just kind of hopefully maybe just to help set a little bit of tone. Um, there is a group out there and I think they've been around for about two years and I've got a short video that I'm not gonna show here, I'll give you the link to. It, it just comes out better when you can watch it on your own than, than kind of having the, you know, the, the videos that we do on these recordings because they get a little choppy. So Black Lives Matters at school is a real thing. Um, but before I go there, I wanted to share with you guys a message I gave out back in June. And this was after the uh, incident uh, with George Floyd back on, I think, I believe it was Memorial Day. Um, and, and I pushed this statement out and I wanted to revisit it um, because it is very localized to our school. Black Lives Matter. At our school, I believe a safe and caring learning environment is strengthened by embracing diversity and respecting self and others. I believe relationships and a sense of belonging are key to learning and that every adult in the district is a mentor to students. I believe students, families, and staff can thrive in a community rich with partnerships, support, and resources. At Auburn High School, we aspire to and are doing the work so that black students, families, and staff will be able to say that the above is our truth. So I pushed that out back in June and um, doing everything I can. And I know that, um, you know, we have a lot of people helping with this, but to really make sure that this is the reality for our students of color, um, it's a great school and we want it to be a great school for everybody. Um, something that Isaiah pushed out to me in an email, and I've got kind of chopped up here in a little bit of a slideshow, you'll get all the resources. It might be more purposeful for maybe a history class, English class, maybe some other courses too. And, and maybe if you can touch on some things, um, some of the resources in the other classes, that would be great also. So a year of purpose, a year of practice. So the week of uh, February 1st through the 5th, it, it's two things. Um, it's, it's National High School Counselors Week. So make sure you send your love to our counselors. They've been working so hard to get the kids in the right places. And then also it was declared um, back in, uh, I think 2019, the first week of February is gonna be for Black Lives Matters at school. So with that, I've got two resources. I've got these on this slideshow, um, on this particular slide, and then on the very end, they're also there. So you don't have to race back through it and you'll get a copy of this. So you got a Black History Month resources. Um, there's tons of stuff there. And there's also a Black Lives Matter school resource and this came directly from Isaiah. So go ahead and take a look at those at your leisure. Um, I wanted to bring some of us back to not quite four years ago, but if you were here four years ago, you'll remember this group of kids. They sat up on our stage in the pack. We had a staff meeting. We gave them some prepared questions and we learned. And um, the students shared some of their own truths about Auburn High School. So a little trivia question I have is, if you were there, um, do you remember an observation made about who may have been missing? And it was an observation made by a teacher and basically, you know, if you weren't there, you won't know. Um, or if you look at the picture, you might realize who wasn't there. We tried to get a very, um, a, a group of kids who we felt were making their way around school fairly well. Um, there's freshmen in here, there's sophomores, there's juniors, there's seniors, kids from all of our different um, racial subgroups. And uh, kids that I knew were gonna be willing to, to, to be honest and, and speak their truths. And what one person realized, and we talked about it for quite some time, and I think it really came down to just um, trust or lack of trust was where are the black males? And that was a great question. And we had some conversation about that. Um, but that's something we've been trying to get better at um, for a long time. Uh, this is that video um, from Black Lives Matters at school. And there's a lot of student voice. It was a little bit of student voice. It's only two and a half minutes. There's a little bit of staff voice in there, but I, I really ask you to, to watch that. And again, that link will be on the last slide also. Um, so here's a, here's a, 
a proposed approach to as we continue to work with disparities at Auburn High, we want to identify the problems of practice. Okay, no one's trying to make students not do well from a cultural standpoint or a bias standpoint. We know that, but we want to ID the pop. Okay, we want to identify what the problems of practice might be or um, a lack of practice. So we want to identify the barriers and the challenges that exist in policy and in practices. Okay, that could be in a classroom, that could be in the principal's office, that could be in the main office, that could be the entire institution that we call education. What are the policies and what are the practices? How does that look to others? And I really want us to really filter through the two questions of who's benefiting when we set up our practices, our social contracts, our, our our school-wide behavior practices, and, and who is not benefiting? And are we taking everything into consideration? So we want to shift over to identifying solutions. Be open to and acknowledge disparities. Think about the role we play, I play, in making AHS the very best school possible for all students. And I probably should have put staff in there too, because um, this isn't just about students. We do have staff of color that we want to make sure we are supporting. It's not about tolerance or inclusion as much as it's about belonging. Okay, so really think about that. Um, February is Black History Month, as I said. What will that mean for our school, especially now that we can't come together in a physical space? What will this mean for AHS, a school that is 10% African American Black students, a school that is 71% students of color? What will their experiences be this month? Will their takeaways be about inclusion? Okay. Will their takeaways be about tolerance? Will their takeaways be about acceptance? Will their takeaways be about belonging? And we're hoping these are the cases. Um, we believe that as long as we're being intentional about what we're doing and we're, we're realizing um, that we're teaching to a large audience, we feel like we have a pretty good chance at that. Um, this isn't about who's right. Um, I know sometimes this can get fall into the political world, but this is about our school, our students and for our staff members of color. You really got to start with empathy. This is about behaviors that can broaden attitudes and ultimately help shape beliefs and results. So there's a little quote. I love this one by Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. So I've got a little activity for you to do just as you're sitting there watching this, the essential ingredients to create improvement and change. And here's the four ingredients. And I guess the word change, you could probably put that in there twice. So there's, there's four or five um, ingredients. And, and this is, you guys know, I come from a research-based platform. And this is what, when we look at implementation science and we look at execution of implementation of whatever that might be, um, there is a particular order that these things have to come into play. So what order do you think these come in when it comes to beliefs, attitudes, change, behavior? What do you think is the very first thing we as adults have to do in order to create improvement and change. So just think about that for a sec. You got four variables here. The very first thing is behavior. We have to be willing to change our behaviors. And many of us, um, we've realized that through coaching, through teaching, um, but we have to be willing to do some things. And, and sometimes we have to kind of do it with a belief without evidence, kind of a, a mindset. The next thing is attitude. Yeah, you got to have the behaviors first. You got to change behaviors or continue behaviors. You got to bring attitude and kids get our attitudes. They may not see all of our behaviors, but they pick up on our attitudes and they know when we're loving the things we do and they know when we're like, okay, this is just something Gardner made us do. Kids know that, okay? Uh, the next thing is belief, okay? So this is the order that really brings about institutional, organizational, individual change. You gotta change the behaviors. Brings on the good attitudes, okay? And, and what that does, that shapes beliefs. And once we start believing in something, then it becomes more of a intentional um, type of thing. And that brings about change, okay? Um, I thought about this a lot when this was first introduced to me, and I thought about some of the things that I've been involved with in the years I've been in education, even around my own home, um, and some other endeavors I've had. And, and really, until you're willing to change your behaviors or really say, I really want to be more intentional with what I'm doing, um, the rest of the things really can't follow. Um, so I want to share a few more things with you, and I'll call it quits here. Um, did you know 
that last year's graduating class at Auburn High, our black students had the highest percentage on-time grad rate. They were above 91%. As a school, we were around 87%, 87 point something. Okay, but it was our black students that had the highest. That's never happened here before. Another thing, did you know, the AHS class of 2019, the kids that have been gone a year and a half, students on IEP graduated at an 85% rate, an increase of 7% from the year before. Did you know the Auburn High School class of 2019, English language learning students graduated at a 61% rate, 61.7% rate, which was 20% higher than the year before. Okay, I didn't throw in last year's because we know that everybody, you know, got a little bit extra um, from the do no harm. But I just wanted to say that our ELLs, even though we've made that a big point of emphasis and we're going to continue to do that, we are winning the war. Okay, the battle, sometimes we fall behind, but we are winning the war. Uh, between 2016 and 2019, Auburn High School student offense and discipline rates continue to trend down for all subgroups of students. Okay, so that's a good direction we're going. Um, ninth graders, the widest achievement gap between racial subgroup, and we have seven in our building, um, subgroup credit attainment for ninth graders has decreased from 54.8% to 23.5% between 2015, 2019. So that's the gap of variance between our highest achieving group and our lowest achieving sub racial, racial subgroup, uh, just with ninth graders. So we've seen the, the gap, it's getting, it's getting smaller. That's exciting. And then we got to continue raising all ships in the harbor as we move along is what a lot of educators like to say. So we really want to think about what's possible. We want to be intentional. Um, let's really think about that as we're working with all of our students, but February is Black, Black History Month. Uh, the first week of February is Black Lives Matter at school. So I just wanted to leave you with that. Here are those uh, resources I talked about, Black History Month resource, a two-minute video on why Black Lives Matter at school, and then an educator's guide. And I would be remiss to say that I did not use, uh, or I did use uh, Slides Go. It was a template. And I guess uh, legally we have to give them a little bit of credit here. I only used a few of them, but I still, I still used them. So anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. You'll have this resource. I'll cut the slides down so you'll have everything you need. And have a great week. Uh, appreciate everything you guys have done um, up to this point. We'll continue working hard and, and doing right for our kids. Thank you.